Does dieting make you fatter? This sounds absurd, but a lot of people believe it. And there is research to support it. For this to make sense, let's briefly rewind to the famous Minnesota starvation experiment, which is one of the most brutal weight loss studies ever. During the war, willing participants volunteered to test the effects of semi-starvation and subsequent refeeding. The male volunteers were put on a diet that reflected severe famine and they had their calorie intake cut in half. They lost around a quarter of their body weight and they became so lean that they noticed severe side effects. Loss of libido, hair loss, dizziness, extreme tiredness, and they became so cold that they requested extra blankets even in summer. They became obsessed with food, sometimes just holding it in their mouths so they could savour the flavour. This severe preoccupation with food is sometimes seen in bodybuilders and physique athletes who have to diet to dick skin levels of body fat for a contest. Interestingly, when the diet finished and they were allowed to start eating more food, many of the participants found this harder. Because although they were eating more food, their appetite was still through the roof and it showed no signs of slowing down. As a popular example of this, Stephanie Butter Moore conducted a social media famous all-in experiment where she had to regain weight to let her appetite signals return to normal after a long period of being very lean. And this is one theory why dieting could make you more susceptible to weight regain in the long term. Because if dieting makes you hungrier and you crave more food, it could catapult you into overshooting your initial starting point and perhaps make you more susceptible to regaining fat mass. On top of that, when you diet, your metabolic rate decreases decreases, and this might persist for an extended period of time. In the famous Biggest Loser experiment, participants lost a whopping 58 kilograms. But when they were tested six years later, their metabolic rates were still 700 calories per day below baseline, despite regaining 41 of those lost 58 kilograms. So we know that dieting could make you hungrier and lower your metabolic rate. And these are two of many reasons why people who go on a diet often regain at least some of the weight they have lost, known as yo-yo dieting or weight cycling. And weight cycling is so common that some people in the anti-diet community propose that you should stop trying to lose weight altogether. Now one of the things we don't know yet is how weight cycling impacts your metabolic rate in the long term. Over a decade or so ago, Lane Norton proposed a metabolic damage theory where if you repeatedly go through dieting cycles, your metabolic rate might be suppressed. And many people resonated with this, perhaps because Lots of you have attempted to diet but didn't get the weight loss results you expect, perhaps indicating that your metabolism was suppressed. But it also attracted a fair amount of criticism because it was a hypothesis that lacked human research to support it. And all of this brings us to a brand new review paper that looks at the physiological effects of weight cycling. Out of the 20 research papers, four of them found that dieting frequency was linked with more fat mass. But that does not prove prove that dieting makes you fatter. It's a chicken and egg scenario because people who are gaining weight are also those who are more likely to diet. The majority of the research did not find an association between weight cycling and fat mass, and also did not find an association between weight cycling and metabolic rate. Basically, metabolic damage just isn't a thing that is supported by most of the research literature. But of course, this does not mean that yo-yo dieting is a good thing. People who frequently weight cycle are perhaps more likely to suffer with depressive symptoms and other adverse health effects. Meaning it might be a smarter idea to keep a similar body weight rather than constantly yo-yo dieting. But regardless, we know that long-term weight loss is difficult and many people jump from one unsuccessful diet to another. Although metabolic damage probably isn't a thing, it is still very important for our industry to shift away from short-term diets towards healthy, sustainable, long-term behaviors.